Welcome. Welcome to the James Webb Auditorium at NASA headquarters. Today we have really an amazing celebration. We are celebrating a name change of a mission that is not just critically important to NASA, but to our partners here in the United States, NOAA, and of course our partners all over, all over the world, as a matter of fact. This is a mission critical, not just to the United States, but to the whole world. So we're going to rename it. Um, but we also have the opportunity today to celebrate an amazing career of one of the NASA family, Mike Freilich. And a lot of you in this room know Mike Freilich very personally. Uh, he was the, the, the head of the Earth Science Division of the Science Mission Directorate, and he did an absolute, absolutely magnificent job running that division. Uh, I will tell you, I got to know him very personally as the NASA Administrator on a number of occasions, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. I first want to start by welcoming some of the international partners that are here in this room that came to the NASA headquarters on behalf of this celebration. Um, and that is very meaningful that you would come all the way across the pond for this. The first one I'd like to introduce is Dr. Joseph Oshbacher. He is the Director of Earth Observation Programs for the European Space Agency. Mr. Alain Radier, he's the Director General of UMETSAT. <laughs> Ms. Mercedes Garcia Perez, the Head of Global Issues and Innovation of the European Union Delegation to the United States of America. Dr. Stephen Voltz, NOAA Assistant Administrator for Satellite and Information Services. And of course, we have with us today the Associate Administrator of Science for NASA, Dr. Thomas Zerbukin. So today is a, a celebration of a naming of the Sentinel-6 satellite, it's also, which is a critical component of the Copernicus program, which is really a global initiative to understand how our Earth is changing, but it's also a celebration of Dr. Mike Freilich and his amazing contributions, not, to, not just to this particular satellite, but to the whole host of missions that NASA does within the Earth Science Division. Here's what we know. We know that the Earth is changing constantly. We know that carbon dioxide is a big reason for that change. We know that humans have put more of it into the atmosphere than, than ever before, and therefore we are responsible, at least in part, for the warming that we're seeing. We also know that NASA has a unique perspective, that we can understand feedback mechanisms. I should say we don't yet, but we're learning how to understand feedback mechanisms. When, when, when the Earth warms, um, we see the Arctic ice melting. And when the Arctic ice melts, it has huge impacts for, for the environment as well. We see the warming when, the, when, the sun when a lot of the energy from the sun is absorbed into the darker ocean rather than reflected by the ice. Uh, that creates a feedback mechanism. Uh, we know that when the Earth greens because of the increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, um, we know that that also has a feedback me mechanism that, that is delayed, but it's the opposite direction. It has a cooling effect. So here's what we know. We know that there is a whole lot more to learn about each of the systems that comprise the entirety of the Earth, the lithosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere. Um, and of course, Dr. Mike Freilich has been at the very center of all of these activities. One of my first interactions with him when I became the NASA administrator, I got invited to participate um, in uh, what was called, it was the, uh, the the Global Ag Summit. It was out in Tulare, California. Um, and I called Dr. Mike Freilich and I said, hey, I, I need to give a speech on how earth science is affecting ag. What is NASA doing to feed more of the world than ever before? And of course, uh, he came up and he shared with me a whole host of different mission sets um, that are uh, critical to increasing the capability of feeding more of the world than ever before. Um, and of course, uh, he, he ran the whole Earth Science Division, um, but there was a number of missions that were very near and dear to his heart. The Copernicus program is one of those. Um, I wasn't the head of the agency at the time, but I have heard from many, many
people that he was a driving force behind um, a lot of these activities that became this global initiative to understand our changing earth and ultimately um, help decision makers make good decisions as it continues to change. Um, so with that, what I'd like to do is show a quick video that demonstrates uh, what Sentinel-6 is, um, who all is involved, and what we can expect from it in the future. Otterbrunn, Germany. At this IAGB clean room, Sentinel-6 is ready for final testing, after which the satellite will be shipped to the US for launch in 2020. Like all the Sentinel satellites, Sentinel-6 is part of the European Union's Copernicus program. But for this satellite, ESA and the EU have joined forces with a number of other partners, such as UMETSAT, NASA and NOAA, benefiting from each other's expertise. The Sentinel-6 mission will consist of two identical satellites that are launched sequentially. They each carry a radar altimeter to provide high precision measurements of ocean topography on a global scale. At an orbit altitude of around 1,300 kilometers, Sentinel-6's lifespan is limited to five years. But by flying both satellites consecutively, the mission will provide data for over a decade. It will continue the long-term data sets on sea surface height that have been gathered since the 1990s by the French Topex Poseidon and the Jason missions. It is crucial to continue these measurements for climate research, as they offer insight into the causes and effects of sea level rise. With water covering two thirds of our planet, monitoring our oceans with Sentinel-6 from space is a necessity. Take a moment and look at those agencies that are involved in Sentinel-6. There's a lot. And I can tell you as the head of NASA, it's really hard to get anything through the bureaucracy. I don't know if any of you have noticed that. Mike certainly has not noticed that because he gets things through the bureaucracy. But, um, but getting anything through the bureaucracy of any big government agency like NASA, like NOAA, is difficult. Um, but here we have this amazing program um, with support from the entire world. And it not just got through our bureaucracy, it got through the NOAA bureaucracy, it got through uh, the European Commission, the European Space Agency, UMETSAT, of course, dealing with Congress, dealing with um, politicians in general. I can say that because I used to be one. It's sometimes difficult. Um, but these programs are important. And if you believe in them, you push for them. And all the roadblocks that come in your way, you, you, make, you, you, you get those roadblocks gone and you keep moving forward. Um, that's what Mike Freilich did. Um, in helping move these programs forward in a meaningful way. And I just want to say we're grateful for your service. Um, and, and I want to say to the folks that are here on the front row, um, you guys have all been champions of this. Um, and he couldn't have done it without your help, um, but you couldn't have done it without his help. And that's why um, this is such a meaningful long-term program. Um, so getting through one bureaucracy is tough dealing with all of the bureaucracies, not just in our own country, but countries around the world is even tougher. Um, and it's, a, it's an amazing tribute to what you've been able to accomplish as the head of the Earth Science Division, Dr. Mike Freilich. So with that, I'd like to bring up um, our next speaker, uh, Dr. Joseph Oshbacher. He's the Director of Earth Observation Programs at the European Space Agency. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is a very special moment to be here, and I really appreciate the very kind words said by NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine on the good cooperation we have, we have between Europe and the United States, because this is a very special moment. It's a very emotional moment, and I'm very pleased and very honored at this moment to announce the renaming of Sentinel-6, which is a joint European-US mission within the Copernicus program, but with a very strong American contribution, which is equal to that of Europe. I'm very pleased to rename Sentinel-6A in the future to be called Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich.
I'm very honored to do this renaming on behalf of not only myself, but many of us in Europe of the ESA member states. I've consulted 22 of our member states, which we have, and they agree, and they send their regards and best wishes. I've also closely coordinated, obviously, with the European Commission in Brussels. We have a representative here today, and with uh, Ella Ratier, Jumetsat, who is also speaking later on. And this is really coming from all our heart. It is to you, Mike, for what you have done in order to make Central 6 happen. I really would like to underline that Central 6 would not exist without Mike Freilich's contribution. Mike has been instrumental in ring fencing, in making sure that the US contribution is materializing and is coming over the many years such a program preparation takes. On our side, and as Jim was saying, it takes a long time and a lot of effort to get programs through the various administrations. And believe me, in Europe with 22 countries on ESA side and 28 on the European Union side, it's by far not easier than here in, in the US. We have our hurdles to take. Uh, but one pillar, one constant element of this collaboration was always that we can trust America, that we can trust US contribution to come, and this through the person of Mike Freilich, who was making sure that US contribution is coming and is being delivered. And this is being shown right now uh, with the finalization of the satellite. We have seen before in the video that we are at the final stage. We had a very important event in uh, uh, close to Munich where the satellite was shown to the press and we will launch it later this year from US Seoul with a US uh, launcher, uh, thanks to the contribution of the United States of America. We have been working with Mike and uh, with NASA Earth Science for many, many years, decades. It goes back actually that we have been working together with NASA to the 80s. But uh, in 2010, we established what is called the Joint Program Planning Group, uh, which is a formal mechanism where we meet formally once a year to exchange our experience, to establish cooperation topics and cooperation activities. And Mike and my predecessor and now myself have been instrumental in making sure this is happening. We have been addressing different topics, uh, missions and technology, calibration validation, field campaigns, but also access to data, exchange of data in many domains. Let me just mention a few of them because they are all important. Gravity, soil moisture, sea ice volume, sea surface salinity, ice sheet volume and mass change, Greenland ice loss, land cover, and many, many other topics where we have been working together for really many, many years. And I think it is a very historic moment also because on our side, the European side, the Copernicus program is maturing and we are launching we have launched a few satellites. We are launching a very important one towards the end of the year. But we are also entering into the next phase of Copernicus. We have a, had a very important and successful ministerial conference in November last year. And we got new money, new commitments from our member states, from our politicians, to start the next phase and the expansion of the Copernicus program. And I would like to do that again with America. We have some ideas in the making. We are in discussion on some concrete missions on some concrete activities, and I hope that we continue the strong cooperation which we have been initiating through Sentinel-6 as one example. And this is really something that makes me very proud, that we have been able to work together. Mike has been a driving force in doing that. Mike has been extremely gentle, nice, and strong in this cooperation with America, with, uh, uh, sorry, with Europe, as an, an American strong partner, but also with other partners outside these two nations or these two blocks, actually at the global level. And Mike has also reinforced NASA's standing in the international sphere through CIOS. When Mike came on board, CIOS was reinforced and really got a much stronger visibility and much more force than it was ever before. So Mike, we really owe you a lot. Also in ESA, you have taught us a lot. NASA is always a big example for us to follow. We always very carefully watch and see what is happening uh, and how you're doing it. And we have learned a lot from you. And I thank you for all the lessons and all the elements you have been teaching us directly and indirectly. And this is very much appreciated. So I'm here really to convey these thanks on behalf of a large community. And I would like to also personally thank you as a friend, as a colleague, but not only myself. I have announced, of course, that I'm coming here to this occasion. 
and many of my colleagues in ESA, but also in our member states, have asked me to convey my, your greeting, their greetings to you through me and making sure that they are reaching you. And I really would like to say, on behalf of all our colleagues in ESA Earth Observation and many other colleagues in ESA, thank you very much for what you have done over the last few years. This is really a small gesture which we can do in order to honor you and honor your contribution to us. Thank you very much, Mike. I was so excited to receive a letter by the European Space Agency and the European Commission proposing that Sentinel-6A should be Sentinel-6 Mike Freilich. Having a satellite named after you is, is pretty remarkable. It's not something we do in Earth science very often. It's not only ESA, it's Europe who wishes to honor uh, Mike Freilich. Mike Freilich um, has been instrumental in making Sentinel-6 a satellite that measures with very high precision sea level rise. The Sentinel missions are something that Mike was very involved in. It really epitomizes the, the role that Mike has played over the years as championing partnerships, championing collaborative investigation of the Earth. Names are reserved for the greats. You don't name after a, a, a satellite after somebody who just does their job. It's the second mission ever named after a person who's alive. It's a huge honor and I couldn't be more excited. Through this, we want to pay tribute to a unique cooperation between the U.S. and Europe and a unique personality, Mike Freilich. Dr. Mike Freilich is a world-renowned ocean scientist who, after a successful career in academia, came to NASA and for a dozen years led all of Earth science. And he's really brought NASA back on the international stage. The partnerships that we forge are beyond a business transaction. They are the, about friendship, and, and Mike did just that. Working with our international partners, working with our interagency partners. And Mike brought that community together in a way that was really unprecedented. Mike Freilich's legacy is being able to build the coalitions that are necessary for us to get as much understanding of our planet as possible. There is not another person more deserving of this honor than Mike Freilich. You know, when I, when I first found out that uh, that Mike had, when I first found out that Mike had cancer, I got a call from Thomas Zerbukin. So I called up the administrator and told him about it immediately. And he, he shared with me kind of what was going on. And, and I, I asked him, I said, we've got to do something um, quickly. I want him to know that um, all the work he's done is extremely meaningful. Mike is a leader to all of us and a mentor and uh, a person who has really advanced earth science for the entire world. What is unique with Mike is his commitment to science and cooperation, but also his resilience and sense of humor. And I believe these are two facets of the same coin. Is unapologetically excellent. I am much better because of what I learned from him and because I had the opportunity to work with him. It's just been uh, very re rewarding, not just for me, but for the people in my organization to have had the privilege, really, of being his colleague and friend. He was absolutely committed to dispassionately following the science. He had high standards for himself uh, and everyone around him. Mike had a very big, uh, very full red pen. Everybody was always afraid of that red pen. His pretty intense energy. Uh, one of the characteristics was the bouncing knee, which you never missed, and it was always there, and you could kind of gauge the way the meeting was going by the pace of the bounce. I have a lot of uh, hilarious emails on my smartphone exchanged with Mike, which I keep as a treasure. And thank you, Mike, for being such a wonderful partner, a trusted partner, who has built up this relationship over many years. Without you, Mike, or without Mike Freilich, this would not have happened. It is a no-brainer that uh... Uh, that, that we all came together and, uh, and that they were able to, to really rally around and, and, and allow uh, the name, renaming of uh, Sentinel-6A after Mike. When I got that letter, the first thing I did is, frankly, I called Mike and said, I received this letter. It would be an honor for all of us if you could name that spacecraft after you. Would you accept that? And he said, I'll be selfish, absolutely. <laughs> I knew in 10th grade that I wanted to be a nearshore oceanographer 
What has driven me is understanding how nature works. I got a call from uh, Dr. Jack Kay here at NASA headquarters asking me whether uh, I might be interested in running the Earth Science Division here at NASA. We made dramatic progress in the last 13 years uh, with our really substantive mission and analysis international collaborations to bring together people who have expertise in many different disciplines, to work for long periods of time on problems that none of them individually could solve, but together could. Earth system science is bigger than any particular agency. It's bigger than any single nation. It's bigger than any single continent. And I surely hope, because humanity requires it, that we make some significant progress in understanding. We all see that Mike is a very special person and uh, allow me to hand over a small gift to you or two small gifts which uh, my colleagues asked me to bring to the United States. One of them one of them is a model of Sentinel-6, now called Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich. <laughs> We have to change the engraving. Uh, <laughs> and, and one is a small box here, which uh, Mike will unwrap uh, back home, I assume. And this comes from our project team in ESTEC. Guido Levrini and the Central 6 project managers, they heard that I'm going here. And uh, they stopped me on the way out when I was there uh, last week. And they said, Joseph, we hear you're going to the US uh, to meet Mike Freilich, and there's this ceremony. Could you please hand over a small personal gift from us because we really miss him, we appreciate his work, and this comes from Guido, Pierrick, and all his team. And now it is my pleasure and also honor to introduce and to ask uh, Thomas, Dr. Thomas Surbuchen to come on stage. Associate Administrator of the Science Mission Directorate. Thomas, please. Thank you, Josef, and thanks for your friendship as expressed through this, general, this generous uh, ac action uh, that uh, came from you and your colleagues uh, all over Europe. We're, of course, here at NASA in an agency that seeks, like no other agency, to leave this planet. We're going to places, to the moon. We want to go to Mars with humans. We want to send missions that look at the vastness of space, at other planets, explore places that we've never seen. But what's really exciting, and uh, one of the benefits of working here, I've talked to many individuals who've been in space. When they're in space, they tell me, the most impressive part is to look back is to look back at our Earth, our Earth that has been from the beginning part of what NASA does, investigating it, understanding the most complex planet we know, and at this moment in time, the only planet where there's life. A planet that is so beautiful that my astronaut friends tell me it takes their breath away because what they think about is that their entire history and all their hope about the future is on this celestial body that looks so incredibly beautiful, a complex system of systems of the type the administrator talked about, a system that we've learned a lot about in the last decades of science, but a system that yet hides a lot of secrets, a system that has all the future and hopes 
of our children and our children's children's right in it, and a system that we investigate as partners. Mike has been a hero for all of us of investigating that very planet. A scientist that brought to work each and every day the discipline that it takes to analyze uh, our planet with the tools of science. Science is very unforgiving, it turns out, very humbling. Most of the time, we don't talk about that very often, most of the time when we do science, we're wrong for the first five times before we get it right. Being a scientist means you bounce back from that. We learn, we question, every question is okay. We answer those questions with the tools that we get from our satellites with data. That's how we're advancing and sometimes get surprised by in fact what the planet is telling us about how it works and about the future. Now, studying in partnership, in true partnership, not only domestically, which is one of the paradigms that Mike brought to work with NOAA, with our cross-agency partners, but also with our international partners, has been something that Mike stood from from the beginning. I, I too remember some of the first meetings with Mike where he told me how important it is to take those partnerships seriously. And I really believe, just like he does, that what we're seeing here, a true partnership I, with, built on genuine interest, genuine alignment of values, and genuine uh, desire to actually help uh, our population get a better understanding, take that understanding, and uh, protect and improve life on Earth. That kind of partnership is what is being manifested here today. What I'm going to say next has everything to do with the personal level of that. Uh, there's very few times uh, during my work here I'm tearing up. Uh, when I got that email from Josef and his uh, European partners was one of those moments. Because you can't talk more about friendship. You cannot talk more about trust than coming to your cross-agency partner and your international partner and naming your spacecraft that was uh, conceived initially, of course, in Europe after your international colleague. That has, my friends, has never occurred in history. In history of this agency and any other agency, in fact, this is only the second time where a mission is named after a person who sees that naming ceremony. I'm just so excited uh, that you're right here uh, with us. But what I'm just so excited about is what this letter said, what this event today says about the hope and the optimism of us coming together and doing the right thing, the right thing in partnership to really advance the understanding of this planet and recommit to the very values that Mike stood for his entire career here uh, that I learned from, that many of us learned from, and that we're committing our careers, our lives to continue uh, in his legacy. I could not be more excited to be here today. And I'm so excited now to introduce one of those international partners, Mercedes Garcia Perez, the head of global issues of the European Union delegation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Zurbuchen. It is a great pleasure and a real honor to represent the European Commission and the entire European Union at the renaming of the Sentinel-6A satellite to honor Dr. Mike uh, Freilich. Sentinel-6 is essential to the mission of Copernicus, and Copernicus is essential to the future of humanity. This is no exaggeration. Copernicus is a factor of change to address the greatest challenges humanity is faced with climate change, and environmental degradation. We need Copernicus as a tool for accurate diagnosis. And in the case of, satellite, uh, of this satellite, it's about sea level rise. We need Copernicus as a tool for monitoring the effectiveness of the remedies we apply. We need it as a tool to identify new threats, and because we need all the data we can gather to understand better our planet. But as it has been explained before, we cannot do this alone because it is a global challenge. We need to work together 
and indeed together is the key word, um, because working together is Dr. Freilich's way of doing things. It is therefore only fair that the Sentinel-6 satellite is now named Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich. It is a gesture of friendship and a celebration of our joint cooperation. Dr. Freilich, you have been instrumental in enabling this mission through significant contributions from NASA. You led us in showing how our organizations can work together on shared projects and objectives, despite our challenges and our differences. You created a space where collaboration can grow, and you nurtured it, you nourished it so that it could flourish. And this is the result today. We're so grateful. And this is not all. You also changed the discipline of earth science in a profound way, combining science and technology to understand our beautiful planet. You did good, Dr. Freilich, for all of us, and for that we're all very grateful. Let me now hand over to Dr. Silvold, known as Assistant Administrator for Satellite and Information Services. Thank you, Madam Garcia Perez, for that introduction and for your words. It's really an honor and a privilege to be here with friends and colleagues to, to pay tribute to Michael Freilich's career, his significant contributions to earth science and satellite altimetry specifically. ESA, the commission, and UMETSAT's generous part, uh, offer, decision to rename the satellite is, is a suitable, tra suitable recognition of Dr. Freilich's career and lifetime of contributions, not just to altimetry, but to earth science in general and the, and the collective objective that we all have you heard about the importance of this mission from climate, sea level rise, and the like. From the NOAA perspective, and I imagine from UMETSAT perspective as well, it's not just what's happening years from now as the sea level rise, but we use these inf the information from the satellite daily as we might monitor storms and how hurricanes are formed and how they're created. So the impact of these missions, and this and many others, is not just in understanding the planet, but it's actually adapting to it and mitigating the impacts of the, Im of the weather and the events that occur on this planet. So it is, it is a a set of data and information that is used daily and, and by all of us around the planet, and we all benefit from this. But I would say at the, the center of today's discussion is about partnerships and about joint ventures. And, and Jim Bridenstine opened up the conversation talking about how bureaucracies are difficult to work with and work through. I'll give you a different perspective. Bureaucracies are what make this possible. This mission and the others we do, which involve billions and billions of euros and dollars, could never be done by an individual with an idea. They're done by a collective, by a community of people with a common idea, and it takes work to get those communities to work together. All of us, and Michael in particular, understood the trust that we had to use citizens' money to invest in Earth understandings and Earth observations. So the bureaucracy was a, not a, an enemy, but a tool. It was a, a mechanism that which we had to work. When Dr. K asked Mike, was he willing to come here, it wasn't a question, is the bureaucracy good or bad, is can I have an impact? And Mike came in with, an, with an, a message and a mission to have an impact, to make a difference in using and working with the people he, he had with us here. And I think it goes without saying that um, having worked with Mike for 12 years here at Earth Science and as I'm over at NOAA, he has the ability to make a change, to up, upgrade the performance of every group he works with. And that's in a very singular, uh, frylic way. It's not coming in and telling everybody what they're doing wrong or how they can do it better. It's coming in and adding value to the mission, adding value to the conversation, asking the right questions that sometimes we look at and ignore or we don't even realize are there, asking how, we, how and why we're doing something in a particular way and how we can do it better with the we as the operative part here. And I'll give one specific example. Um, Mike sat through hundreds and hundreds of pro program management council meetings here in science, in, the, in NASA, the science directorate. Maybe a quarter of those were earth science, the others were astrophysics, planetary science, and the like, and, and in every one of those, he participated. He asked, he made, made everybody else start to ask those same questions. He made, the, it was not about personal performance, but it was about what are we trying to achieve, and I think in that, in that role here and in other areas, we we're able to raise the bar of what we can expect from ourselves, from our partners, and from our own, and, and from our larger global community, and which is where the global part was really the essential part that Mike brought in. So I, and I'll end with a personal note. Um, Mike, the characterization of, of helping the group work better was epitomized by an observation, a mentoring job, a task Mike gave me once. He said, never ask for information you're not gonna do something with. 
Don't ask for something just because you can, just because it's interesting. Understand that in asking a question, you're asking somebody else to do a lot of work. And that definitely happens in a position of power, which Mike had, and I've learned in the one I have. You don't ask for something for interest, you ask because you need it. It's necessary and it's essential. Now why is that important? The message that sends back is, I'm respectful of other people's time and effort. I don't do something because I can, I do something because it's important and it's necessary. And that was the message Mike constantly brought across. We were doing this for a greater purpose, not just to aggrandize a particular organization, a particular mission, but because the mission is part of a whole, which is necessary for, for all of us to thrive. And I appreciate, Mike, your mentoring and teaching so we can do that. I think it really is, is an epitome to, to Mike's character and his contributions. It is respectful of mission and of people, respectful of the purpose and an understanding of the greater goal which we only accomplish by working well together. So Mike, you've done that and uh, you've, you've, this tribute here is a testimony to what that's been able to do and what we will continue to follow through with as we've learned from you. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Alain Rattier, the Director General of UMETSAT, my partner in, in weather and earth observations. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I think our presence today reflects our commitment to a long-standing and very special partnership for ocean and sea level monitoring. NASA and CNES started with the TOPEX Poseidon and JSON missions. UMETSAT and NOAA joined with JSON 2. The European Commission joined with JSON 3. It's not known, but it's true. And ESA with Sentinel-6 taking the lead on the satellite development. And today, we all stand as one. This is a very special partnership, and uh, it started under the best uh, transatlantic auspices. Believe it or not, but the JSON program was approved by the CNES Board of Governors on the 4th of July. This was a prediction. <laughs> I remember uh, we were close to renaming Topex Poseidon. The name of Laplace, a famous French scientist who put tide, ocean tides in, into equations emerged. But it sounded a bit too French, and nobody had met Laplace. <laughs> so uh, this time, uh, it was much easier to rename our next satellite, Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich, even if the European Commission, ESA, and UMETSAT had to agree on the Copernicus side. And yes, Jim, we did not need an MOU. Well, this time, we had no bureaucracy because we all wish to communicate the value and resilience of our transatlantic cooperation and pay tribute to the unique personality of Mike Freilich. Mike Freilich's commitment to Earth system science with no borders and to cooperation is unrivaled. And we in Europe are delighted to honor a true American who is also a citizen of the world. This is the best introduction I found for Dr. Michael Freilich, and, but I'm sure he will introduce himself much better than I could. Mike. Thanks, if I'm gonna do my 45 minute lecture on altimetry, we have to get going. Seriously, I'm more than humbled by this great honor. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now, decadal scale trends in regional and global sea level <laughs> are perhaps the most robust evidence that Earth's climate is changing. And that's why humanity, not one agency, not one country, not one continent, but why humanity has been monitoring global sea level from space with exquisite accuracy for more than 28 years. Like the Sentinel-6 missions that we've heard about today, each one of the previous precision nadir altimetry missions has involved essential international collaboration between European and US agencies. 
And based on my research, at least, if you take all the altimeter missions together, the continuous altimeter mission set represents the longest and most successful multinational and intercontinental collaborative Earth remote sensing program that our species has achieved. That is an accomplishment. As we've evolved our instrument and our spacecraft designs, so too have we strengthened and broadened our transatlantic collaborations. I actually thought that, you know, as sea level rises and the ocean deepens, we have deepened our collaborations as well. But make no mistake, our ability to do precision altimetry over the decades and to implement Sentinel-6 now is possible only because of the vision and the contributions of many thousands, thousands of scientists, engineers, managers, and yeah, diplomats, from both sides of the Atlantic and from academia, government, and industry. Each and every one of those thousands of contributors deserves to have their name associated with this mission, and I personally salute you all. Thank you, Administr Administrator Bridenstine. Thank you, Yosef, Thomas, Alain, Mercedes, and Steve, for your kind words and your strong support over the years and the decades. Speaking to you and to everyone who contributed to the successful development of Sentinel-6, it's been a privilege to work with you, to learn from you, and to be able to call you friends. The entire world is expecting great things from Sentinel-6, and I know that you will deliver. Go Sentinel-6. What I'm going to do is close off this uh, really exciting event. Of course, today is all about Earth science, the love of our planet, and our desire to understand it. It's about international partnership and friendship. And it's about, quote, a unique personality, <laughs> Mike Freilich, our friend, and his impact in this, uh, really in this desire uh, to understand our planet better. I want to thank you, Jim, uh, Brian Stein, and your team. Uh, what's really important to me is whether we're in front of cameras, whether in a room by ourselves at 8 o'clock at night, you've always been consistent about your support and, uh, uh, of earth science and of partnerships. And so I just really want to thank you for being here today. In fact, I want to thank you for actually recommending as the first person that we should really consider uh, naming a mission uh, for Mike, and we will always have that credit uh, from where I'm at. You, you were the first one who brought that up. I want to thank the representatives from centers, uh, Dennis Sandrusik, the center director at Goddard, the representatives uh, from JPL, of course, where a lot of this work uh, will happen. There's still a lot of work to do uh, with Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich. And I want to thank the international partners who have spoken here, who already uh, mentioned their name. I want to thank all the colleagues who took time out of their day, you're all busy, I know, uh, to celebrate with us, uh, both Mike, uh, but also uh, this important event. And I want to thank Mike and Shoshana for being here uh, to celebrate with us. November 10th, 2020, I want to see all of you again, Mike and everybody else. We're going to be in Vandenberg together 
and we're going to look at this rocket that stands there with that spacecraft on top of it, ready to launch, having the hopes and work of all these thousands of colleagues, international colleagues, on top of there, ready to launch. I'm going to be very nervous, as will be Yosef. It's not because we don't trust the amazing industry that has over many years successfully put these spacecraft up. It's when that moment occurs, where we lift out of, away from this planet. It's a historic moment any time, a moment that you love every time. I know I sat next to you for one of them, and, uh, and we've celebrated. And we're all going to be there, and we're going to shout. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say, and I want to have you repeat after me before we close off. I'm going to say there, go Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich. Go Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich. Thank you so much. <laughs>